Welcome to another video. In this one, we'll be looking at Mathematics B, the ultimate guide to paper 1 and 2. Now, you must know this is Mathematics B for Pearson, Edexcel, International GCSC or IGCSC. Um, so if you're doing Cambridge or something else like AQA, this might not apply to you. This is only for Mathematics B for Pearson, Edexcel IGCSC. So first of all, we're going to look at the syllabus for both the papers. Now, why is this important? Um, you need to know what is going to be assessed, of course, in the maths papers. Um, it's important to know these things, even though, of course, your teacher will probably be taking you through this or if you're doing privately then of course you need to know this through the specifications so i just want to go over the main topics which are covered in these papers so first of all of course numbers so what it means is the different kinds of numbers rational numbers irrational numbers natural numbers whole numbers you need to know the distinction between them of course you need to know about negative numbers decimal numbers all of that okay then sets of course um, venn diagrams um, then Algebra. Algebra is very important in IGCSE maths. Um, it usually comes in every single question almost. It even comes in geom geometry questions and whatnot. So your algebra has to be really good for maths. Then functions. Now functions are a bit complex so I can't really explain them but it's a very important topic. Then matrices another very complex topic which you need to have a full grasp on in order to get good marks for your exam and then geometry which I just mentioned um, all about triangles getting angles um, uh, parallel lines whatnot okay mensuration now mensuration has uh, everything to do with area volume parameter okay um, so volume of 3d objects um, density as well all of that comes under this it's a very vast topic and you need to know all the formulas for area and especially for this exam you don't get the formulas for area volume and all in some questions they might give you the formula but you never know so you need to memorize all of these formulas from before okay then vectors and transfer transformation geometry so vectors is another very um, difficult topic I would say it is difficult because you need to do a lot of practice and the questions are really different sometimes like not every question is the same for vectors so you need to be really good at it um, transformation geometry is also hard then finally trigonometry trigonometry is sine cos tan um, I'm sure you'll all probably know this sine cos tan pythagoras triangles all of that is trigonometry um, i'm not going into a lot of detail by the way for these topics so this is not like a conclusive description of everything um, but yes lastly statistics and probability so probability uh, there's quite a few questions that come up related to six-sided dice um, being to a six-sided dice being rolled and then what is the probability of this happening and that happening also with coin tossing and you have to be really careful in probability okay so that's our last topic 10 topics in total um these are all the main topics which are listed in the maths igcsc mathematics b igcsc specification okay so in total these make up um all the topics for paper one and paper two um of mathematics b now you have to keep in mind that all of these topics make up the IGCSE and all of these topics come in both paper one and paper two. So it's not like half of them come in paper one and then half of them are in paper two. No, both paper one and paper two assess all of these topics um, and the questions can come from anywhere. The only difference um, between these two papers is the questions, which we'll look at in more detail right now. So first of all, we'll look at paper one, of course. Oh, before that, the link to the full specification, i.e. the full syllabus is down below in the description. OK, so check that out as well. If you don't know what a specification is or you're confused about it, you can check out my other video, um, which is all about what a specification is and why it's so important when you're giving your IGCSC exams, okay? Okay, so before we move on to paper one, let's look at this thing over here, which I wanted to share because it's um, interesting to know that in both paper one and paper two, as you can see, problem solving is 30% of the paper and mathematical reasoning is 20%. So that's the relationship of problem solving and mathematical reasoning skills to papers. So in total, it makes up 50% for paper one, 50% for paper two, which makes up 100%. And out of that 50%, 30% um, is for problem solving, which means <laughs> you need 10% more problem solving skills um, than mathematical reasoning. That doesn't mean 
um, your mathematical reasoning has to be weak. No, you have to be good in both. But the point here is sometimes you may know all the formulas, you may know all the reasoning behind the maths, but um, you may not be able to solve the problem because of the way the problem is put forward or because of the language or the way the problem is asked. So that is the main thing in maths. You have to practice. Only when you practice, you learn how to solve the problem and apply the formulas that you have learned. Okay, so that's just a small tip out there. Okay, moving on, let's look at some important details related to paper one. So first of all, even though this may not seem like an important detail, the code for this paper is 4MB1 slash 0101. The code is not essential in the sense that you don't need to memorize it to pass the exam of course but you should have an awareness of okay this is the paper i'm giving this is the code of the paper that i have to give so you can double check okay i'm giving the right paper or you know it's always good to know this information before you give the actual exam okay so that's the code for paper one for mathematics b okay then next most important thing it's a hundred marks paper so it's out of hundred marks then the third thing it constitutes for 33.33 percent of the entire maths igcsc and then fourth um, it's 1.5 hours long so 90 minutes long paper um, and lastly it is a longer paper than paper two um, in the sense uh, not of timing you don't get more time um, than paper two actually you get less time than paper two uh, in the sense that uh, paper one only has 90 minutes whereas in paper two you have two hours and 30 minutes but what i mean by longer paper is that there are more questions but the questions are shorter so okay so let's look at some sample questions um, now in total for paper one there are 26 to 30 questions so anything in between i think in the one which i gave there were 27 or something um, now that's not important what's important is that um, you have to be really, really quick in answering paper one because you have, first of all, less time. You have 90 minutes only compared to paper two where you have two hours, 30 minutes. So you have only 90 minutes or 1.5 hours for this paper and you have a lot more questions. You have around 26 to 30 questions and each of them ranges from around two to five marks or maybe two to seven marks each it depends and i'll show you as well now you should see this important thing which i've added in bold it says you must write down all the stages in your working so this is very important in maths of course whenever you are answering any question you have to write down all the stages to your working all the essential stages have to be seen on paper for the examiners to um, analyze and see that yes you're doing the right thing you're following the right formula to get to the answer and um, you're not obviously just copying off from someone else because if you just write the answer there's no proof of how you worked out that answer okay so that's an important tip you have to write down all the stages in your working and i'm sure your teachers or your tutors have probably told you this lots of times as well so this is a sample question make x the subject of this equation which is y equals to tx plus 4y square so you have to change the subject over here to x and this question you can see total for question three is two marks you always have to write the answer on the dotted line by the way you can see the dotted line over there um so that's where you have to write your final answer and the other white space is for writing down your workings um yeah so this mark uh, this sorry this question is for two marks so that's probably the lowest uh, marks that a question can probably have two marks okay and then next um here's a bit of a longer question which is for three marks um and you have to write two answers you have to show the value for x and the value for y this is simultaneous equations once again um not many marks it's not seven marks or something just three marks so you can see the pattern here that there are lots of small questions for like two to five marks and there are quite a lot of them which you have to do really really quickly so you have to be really good at these questions and all your theory and practice should come into play right now um, then just another example of a, a bit of a longer question it is longer because it requires you to pay more attention to the diagram and things like that um, but as you can see this is also for three marks it says in the bottom there the total for question 14 is three marks you can see it there moving on to another sample question um, so you can see this one has two parts and the total for this question uh, is seven marks so I think that's probably the highest that a question 
can go seven marks eight marks that's the maximum it goes to and um, this is matrices um, which is the one of the topics we talked about in the beginning okay so these are some sample questions from paper one you can even go to the Pearson site and get um, sample assessment materials and past papers of course I'll give the links for all of that in the description um, it's very important for you for everyone to practice past papers so that's um, paper one done we'll go and look at the same thing for paper two so beginning with of course the code so for this paper it's 4mb1 slash 02 okay because it's the second paper then this one is also 400 marks but um, it constitutes 66.66 percent .66 of the IGCSC so it holds a bigger share of the entire maths IGCSC so if you mess up a lot in paper two there's a higher chance of your grades um, getting lower so you have to be very careful with paper two you have to practice a lot of paper two past papers okay so and as i said um, this is a longer paper so two hours 30 minutes long around i think one hour more than paper one so you have good time but the questions are longer so it's a shorter paper yes there are lesser questions and you have more time but the questions themselves are longer and we'll look at that just in a moment okay so here are some sample questions first of all in total for paper two there are only 11 to 12 questions okay so this is quite less from uh, compared to paper one um, but you have to keep in mind that these 11 to 12 questions are pretty much um, multi-part questions so um, like the one you can see in front of you so they're quite long so don't feel relieved that oh there are only 12 or 11 questions because all of these questions look something like this um, and I'll show you some more examples of how these questions look like so one example is um, this one like it has a b c and each part is like one mark then two marks then two marks um, and it's all like connected um, so these are longer questions which is why paper uh, paper 2 also has more time so you have 2 hours 30 minutes that's one thing as well which I have noticed and I've experienced of which is that in paper 1 most students tend to lose a lot of time and they have to catch up quite a lot and you know they sort of run short of time in paper 1 because in paper 1 you have lesser time so 1 hour 30 minutes and more questions so you have to be really quick in paper 1 but paper 2 it's a bit not relaxed but you have more time and even though the questions are longer you don't have that rush as you do in paper one still you still need to practice both papers equally well and paper two you need to practice um, more because the questions are harder so even though they might be easier to complete within the time frame they're harder so there's more chance of making mistakes so you have to be careful about that okay so that's one thing now this is one example of a question which in total adds up to like around five marks okay so that's one type and then of course after every answer uh, after every question there's like this blank space so in paper two there's a lot of space to answer the questions and a lot of space to show you're working so this is like an example space which they give you in the exam paper okay um, and then here are some more examples of questions you can see how long there are so question three on the left side you can see that's a pretty long question about sets and venn diagrams okay and in total it's around six marks it has around how many a and b and then the a part has two subsections as well um, so that's the long question and then another type of long question is the sixth one on the right hand sign you can see it has a b c d e so it has like um, five parts to it and in total i think it adds up to five six seven eight eight marks in total if i've counted that right so you can see so five marks eight marks six marks that's how the questions are marked um, in paper two so they're not two marks or three marks like we saw in paper one of course they're longer questions so they're for more marks then another type of question is the one are the ones with the graphs of course so you do get graph paper to draw on as you can see on the left hand side you have graph paper um, like the graph is plotted out for you and everything and the scale is there and all so you don't need to worry about that you have to plot it correctly of course and if you don't plot it correctly as you can see on the right hand side there is another uh, graph which is given down below in the exam paper where you can redraw your graph if you make any mistake in the first one okay so that's some examples of what the paper two questions look like overall um, this is everything I think that you need to know for the mathematics B exam papers as for how to get an A star in them or how 
I did my revision and stuff. You can watch my video on how I got an A star, how I got all A stars in all of my subjects. It has some general revision tips and things. And in the future, I might make more videos on maths as well. For now, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and comment down below um, if you found the video useful.